The last thing we'll look at for incineration is how to do a mass balance on an incinerator. So kind of similar to compost, incineration is an excess oxygen reaction. So when we balance the reaction, all we need to do is add as much oxygen as we need to get to the end products that we think we're going to get. Um, but those end products aren't entirely obvious. It's not always just the highest oxidation state of these materials. Um, based on the conditions inside the incinerator, uh, we'll get different compounds for each. So I'll give you just a couple seconds to think through what do you think we'll get from our carbon, our hydrogen, our nitrogen, um, and our sulfur, as well as the ash fraction, which doesn't show up in the empirical formula above, but we know um, there's a non-organic portion in our waste as well. And here's what we tend to get. So carbon tends to go all the way to carbon dioxide. That's our intended combustion product. Um, we can have some incomplete combustion producing carbon dioxide or monoxide, as well as dioxins and furans. Dioxins and furans are highly toxic, and it's very important that those are prevented from being formed or oxidized fully or removed from the flue gas. And we'll touch on that in air pollution control. But if we're doing our job, all our carbon's going to end up as carbon dioxide dioxide. Our hydrogen will end up as water. Nitrogen, although there are many oxides of nitrogen, um, most of it will end up as nitrogen gas, N2, um, which is the inert form. All the oxides of nitrogen have environmental effects that we want to avoid, so um, the reaction will target forming nitrogen gas instead, and any nitrogen oxides that end up in the flue gas will actually be reacted to nitrogen gas through the air pollution control um, process. So there's re uh, reactors called selective and non-selective selective catalyt catalytic reducers, uh, which will mix nitrogen oxides with ammonia, um, which is the reduced form of nitrogen, and form nitrogen gas and water to get rid of any of those nitrogen oxides. Sulfur, again, although there are more oxidized forms of sulfur, the primary product com from combustion is SO2. We'll get a little bit of SO3 and sulfuric acid, which is SO3's hydrated form, um, but for the most part, we'll get SO2. And then our ash will end up as particulate matter um, in our bottom ash or our fly ash. There's also going to be some metals that end up in the bottom ash that we'll be able to extract later. Um, for the most part, we don't consider any oxygen consumption by the ash fraction, although some of the metals will form a bit of metal oxide, but we tend to ignore it in terms of the oxygen requirements in our equation. And if we uh, look at all these elements together on the incinerator. Um, we've got our waste and our air being supplied. We've got our fly ash and our bottom ash coming out of our ash fraction, and then our flue gas consisting of all these gases that we were just looking at. So when we do a mass balance, same as any other mass balance, the sum of the reactants has to equal the sum of the products. Um, specifically for us, our air is going to be for incineration about 20 to 300 percent more in terms of oxygen that we actually need. So that's the amount of excess that's present. So we'll we'll have more air than we need. And then in terms of our ash, typically it's going to be on the order of 15 to 20 percent of the MSW dry mass coming in. So those are kind of the unique elements to the incinerator mass balance. But when we do the math, it's just the same as any other mass balance, um, making sure they all add up to show that that there's no net production of mass from the system. So let's try an example. In our example, an incinerator accepts 50 tons of MSW per day. The stoichiometric oxygen demand, so that would be based on our balanced reaction, um, is 30 tons per day of oxygen, and it's specified that 80% of an excess is supplied. So we get 100% of the stoichiometric requirement plus 80% extra. 20% of the MSW coming in is ash, and in this one it's simplified. We just have a total ash. We haven't separated into fly ash and bottom ash. And the question is, um, what capacity should the air pollution control system have in tons per day of air um, in order to treat the flue gas that will be produced by this system? So for our solution, um, we can look at all the mass balances and see what we know and what we don't know. So our MSW in, we know is 50 tons per day is a given. The air, we were given the excess aeration requirement. So it's 30 tons per day 
plus 80% excess. And it was 30 tons of oxygen. So to convert oxygen to total, we multiply it by one over the oxygen content of air, which is 23% by mass, and then multiply that by one plus the excess. So 30 tons of oxygen is actually 235 tons of air total. So that gives us this air flow. Our ash, we know it's 20% of the waste coming in. So we just multiply it through and we have our ash. And then to close our mass balance it, rather than going through and doing all this math and figure out you know, how many moles of each and blah, 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 we can just look at our formula that reactants equals products. We have our three knowns and our one unknown. So we just subtract um, the mass coming out from the mass going in, and we're left with 274.8 tons per day of gases being produced. And this uh, equation is just the total, so it doesn't separate out which gases are combustion products uh, from which gas is the excess air, it's just the total. If we wanted to get more detailed and disaggregate those, then we'd have to get a little bit more um, into the calculation. But um, just a simple mass balance we can solve with our products and reactants on the system. So 274.8 tons of air is quite a bit of air, and that's why, as you'll see in the air pollution control section, uh, when we look at how much of the incinerator is actually just devoted to air pollution control, it's about half the plant. So there's a lot of machinery and energy and effort involved in just dealing with all this flue gas that comes out of these. So kind of similar to compost in that way, it inherently produces a lot of air that needs to be treated. Um, and that's something that's a little bit different about or gasification and pyrolysis, which are kind of more like AD, where they don't necessarily have to produce any air at all if um, all that gas is taken and used for something else.